How did Jesus treat women? So the quick answer to the question, how did Jesus treat women, is he treated them as valuable and trusted sisters, which is, of course, normal in God's kingdom, but shocking in Jewish culture. When you know Jewish culture, you realize that Jesus was radical. Jesus clearly revealed the character of God for his daughters. He loved them, he cherished them, he honored them and valued them. He treated women radically different than the culture demanded. We are going to go over a few stories in the Gospels to help you see the interaction that Jesus had with women during his day. You will realize the counter-cultural teaching and the actions of Jesus. Let's look first at John chapter 4. There Jesus spoke with the Samaritan woman at the well. He discussed theology with her. He revealed himself as the Messiah to her. He actually gave his first I am statement to this woman. Now, of course, you know his I am statements frame the theological backbone of the Gospel of John. She then became an evangelist to her village. The Jewish culture prohibited Jesus from speaking to women in public, but he did it anyway. Jesus crossed many barriers. He crossed the ethnic barrier. She was a Samaritan. He crossed the gender barrier. She was a woman. He crossed the holiness barrier. She was a sinful woman. And he crossed the traditional theological barrier in that he discussed theology with this woman. Now let's go to Luke chapter 10, verses 38 through 42. Here you have Mary sitting and speaking and listening to Jesus at Jesus's feet. Now, that does not seem very radical. But remember we said that the Jewish people would say it is better for the Torah to be burned up than to be delivered to a woman. The Jewish culture did not want women learning from the Torah. Now, it is also important that you understand that Mary, while she was sitting at the feet of Jesus, she was taking the position of a disciple. In that day, the disciples would sit at the feet of their rabbi. So not only was Mary leaving Martha to do the housework, but she was sitting and she was learning at Jesus's feet. And that was scandalous in the culture. But Jesus said, this will not be taken away from her. Now, it's also important to understand that in this culture, disciples who sat at the feet of the rabbi, they were expected to teach what they learned. So in effect, Mary was learning to become a teacher. Let's look in Luke chapter 13. In the synagogues of the day, women had a special place to participate in the back of the synagogue. But Jesus called her to the front of the synagogue where he was. Come to him in the front. There at the front, he healed her, and he called her daughter of Abraham. Now, son of Abraham was a common term, but daughter of Abraham was never used. Jewish women were not considered equal heirs to the Jewish men. But Jesus demonstrated that women have great worth and great dignity. And in John chapter 11, Martha and Jesus talk at the death of Lazarus. They had a deep theological conversation on the central beliefs of the Christian faith, the resurrection. Now, Jesus did not tell his disciples that he was the resurrection and the life, but he told this incredible truth to Martha. Now, Martha answered with the same words of faith that Peter the apostle used. You are the Christ, the Son of the living God, who is to come into the world. And when Peter said that, Jesus replied to him, You are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church. Flesh and blood did not reveal this, but my Father in heaven revealed this. This means that the Father in heaven can reveal things to women as well. The truth about the divinity of Jesus. In Luke chapter 11, verses 27 and 28, this is one of my favorite stories, although it's only two verses. Jesus is teaching, and all of a sudden this woman cries out, Blessed is the woman who gave you birth and nursed you. Now, in the Jewish culture, a woman's value came primarily through giving birth to a male child. The woman was simply stating the traditional rabbinic blessing. Women are blessed indirectly through their son or husband who can learn the Torah and go to the synagogue. Jesus corrected this belief 
by saying that a person's value comes through obedience to hearing God's word and doing it, not by giving birth and caring for a baby. Jesus redefined the woman's value to society as more than her biological and nurturing function. It's not wrong to be a mother, but Jesus was saying that there's more to women. He showed that marriage and having children is not what completes a woman. It is hearing God's word and obeying it. Jesus offered a new standard. So sisters in Christ, if you are not married, you are blessed, Jesus says, if you hear God's word and obey it. Having a husband, having children does not make you complete. And Jesus places a story in the gospels to help all of us understand that truth. Jesus placed women in the center of four major life events. Now, this was not to show the superiority of women over men. It was not to get revenge on the men. This was to restore women to her rightful place alongside men. Let's consider these four pivotal moments in Jesus' life. At Jesus' birth, Mary carried him, delivered him, held him, took care of him. At the anointing for the burial of Jesus, a woman anointed his body with the, with the pint of nard, and Jesus said, what she has done will be remembered forever. At the death of Jesus, the women stayed close to the cross, while the men fled. And at the resurrection of Jesus, the women came to take care of his dead body. Instead, the resurrected Jesus gave them the message of his resurrection to evangelize the disciples who were hiding. At the birth, at the anointing, at the death, at the resurrection of Jesus, women were placed front and center. Jesus entered into a very messy, broken culture. Jewish culture had been deeply influenced by Greek and Roman culture, but Jesus demonstrated his new kingdom ethic built on the character of God. You and I in our broken cultures have the opportunity to live this kingdom ethic. Women, sure, you may have been hurt by men or sometimes other women in the church even, but don't live with rights as your motivation don't allow bitterness to move you to a hatred of men or a desire to have revenge on them. Live the new kingdom ethic. And men, we have an awesome opportunity to live counterculturally in regard to male-female relationships. May we value, may we encourage, open doors for, may we build up our sisters. God created the ideal family with perfect harmony and unity between the man and woman. He created a powerful team with a worldwide mandate. While the fallen family brought division, devastation, and discord between the men and women, Jesus turned it all around. Jesus the Redeemer brought the possibility of a restored relationship through His crucifixion and resurrection. May we now live out the redeemed family with the harmony and unity God developed at creation, and again, serve as a powerful team for Jesus's worldwide mandate. Let's go. In light of these stories, take a few moments and consider, what does this teach you about the character and nature of God? What does it show about the character and nature of people? What is one thing you can do to obey today? And with whom can you share this? Until all know, run with it.